Jennifer Fox is an internationally acclaimed, award-winning producer, director, and educator, directing, producing, shooting, and consulting on documentaries around the world. Jennifer's films have won numerous awards, including four prizes at the Sundance Film Festival. Jennifer joins us live via telephone. It's great to have you here on the show. Uh, when did you begin uh, documentary filmmaking? I began a long time ago when I was 20, which was 1980, because I'm 48 now. And uh, I went to, um, well, I decided I wanted to be a film school, and I came to New York to go to New York University. What's the premise of flying Confessions of a Free Woman? Well, flying starts with my own life as a, you know, I was in my early 40s. And I realized suddenly or felt that I didn't fit and I had to reevaluate who I was as a woman. And for me, it was kind of a crisis of identity. I wasn't married. I didn't have kids, although I'd had a string of boyfriends my whole life. And I really wanted to talk to other women, both in America and around the world, and sort of figure out, you know, what are our lives today? And are, are they similar? Are they different? How do we connect as women? What did you learn most about yourself while making this documentary? Well, I think the thing that struck me strongest is that I thought that my life was personal. You know, I'm Jewish, middle class, white American, and I thought whatever happened to me was a personal issue. It wasn't because of my gender. It was because of my particular family or my particular environment. And what I learned through the film is that in fact, much of what happened to me in my life or things I suffered from are because I'm a woman or, or was a girl. And that women suffer and enjoy very much the same things everywhere across class and culture. So it was really exciting to see that, that I as a white Jewish woman can totally relate to a South African woman from the township or a woman, you know, who's wearing a scarf in Pakistan. And in fact... A lot of what we're dealing with isn't culture, but it's gender. How did you feel uh, seeing your personal life on film, let alone seeing the effect of audiences' reaction to your life? You know, I have to say it feels good. I mean, a lot of people say, oh, don't you feel so exposed? Or I know all the intimate details of your life, but I feel good about that because I feel like um, my life... Yes, it is, again, it's personal, but it's also political. You know, much of what I've gone through, many women today go through or have been through, you know, very rarely, like in America, is a girl a virgin when she's married. She's had boyfriends, she has her sexuality, she's maybe had abortions, maybe when she tries to get pregnant, she can or has a miscarriage. Things that I go through in the film are actually quite common, and I, I feel good using myself as a way to talk about those things. And then, of course, my family's in the film, my mom and my aunt and my Graham and my dad, and um, it's really good to see just how ordinary they are and how normal it is and the problems we have are quite usual, not just in America, but across the world. There's a scene in the film, it's a Jewish scene, where there's like a buffet of food and there's some sort of Jewish holiday happening. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, the film actually pretty much starts with the Passover. It happens to be the year, it's the Passover after 9-11. And I live right near the World Trade Center, so I have a very eclectic mix of friends, you know, of different cultures and colors, you know, so there's my Afro-American friends there, and there's some friends from Europe, and there's some Jewish friends and some non-Jewish friends, but we all get together, about 30 of us every year, with some changes, <laughs> and the film opens with that Passover, and I think what's different than the way I grew up, which where my father led the Passover, is that in my house, I lead the Passover, I sit at the head of the table, and you know, I may have a boyfriend, but I'm a single woman running the Passover, and everybody gets to participate. And also that um, my friends, even if they're not Jewish, really enjoy it tremendously. <laughs> they just, uh, it becomes a celebration about freedom and emancipation from slavery, which all of us can relate to.
You traveled to 17 countries and interviewed a diverse group of women about how they define their lives. Who was most intriguing to you, and what did the experience teach you about your own life? Well, honestly, it's hard for me to choose because there are the women in Pakistan who are amazing or the women from Somalia who are amazing. But the one I think that comes to mind is a friend, a new friend, because I met her there filming, a woman from India named Paramita. And she's just tough, smart. She runs um, a a community-based help program. She really turned my head about the difference between love and sex. And she was basically saying, you know, you know a lot about sex and passion, but you don't know much about love. And what about commitment and what about who's going to be there to take care of you when you get old? And she was really tough on me, but I found it really, really fantastic. So she's one hell of a woman, and, and I hope people get to see her. She's in the third hour of the film. What can women learn from this film? Well, A, it makes them want to talk about their lives because they just feel, wow. I often hear people say when they see this film, I've never seen a film that actually describes my life like this film. It's just that there's so many women experience in the film, and the film is actually about the way we speak as women. So it's very intimate, and uh, it's very much like our lives, and, and women really feel almost like, oh, what a relief. I finally feel somebody gets it. Or a lot of women have come up to me and said, thank you, I thought I was alone. But in fact, I'm not. I'm just like everybody else. So they kind of, like me, realize that there's community, that it isn't just them that life is happening to. But I have to say, men really love it too because it's a lot about sex and it gives them a lot of insight into, you know, kind of the secret lives of women. And um, men have just loved the film. Uh, you used the passing the camera technique, and this helped you demonstrate the communication among the women in the foreign countries. The outcome of it appears to be very personal, and this technique opened up good discussion in the film. How did the passing the camera technique happen, and how did you discover that, and what made you want to use it in the film? Sure. You know, the film really came about because I was noticing that the way my girlfriends and I speak was so special. And over the years, kind of holding me together, these great conversations with my women friends, and I happen to have women friends all over the world because I've always worked all over the world. So I decided, okay, I want to make a film about the way women speak, but if I have someone observe us speaking, we're going to get all stiff So I kept thinking, well, what can we do with the camera? And that's when I came up with the idea of, you know, well, let's just pass it back and forth in a kind of horizontal way, the way, you know, women speak anyway. And when I tried it, just playing around, fooling around with my girlfriends, it worked so well so that it's almost like the first time you really see really captured the way women really speak in a natural way. Because the passing the camera just opens people up so well. And uh, it's quite an amazing technique, and I really hope people listening will try it. You can find out about it actually on our website at flyingconfessions.com because we have instructions and everything about it. It's so easy, and it really works. Some people would argue that the film is solely a feminist film or a socio-political film, an experiment, or otherwise... As the creator of the film, can flying confessions be placed in a category or genre, and how do you place flying confessions of a free woman? It's incredibly entertaining, but what people usually say when they watch it is that they can't stop watching it, so it's addictive. I think it's good storytelling using some new techniques and a multiple of techniques, but basically it's a really great story about happens to be about my life and the lives of about 30, 40 other women around the world. So it's entertainment in some way, but it's entertainment with a purpose, which is, I think, what we're trying to do as filmmakers is to capture and to have people enjoy a good story, which all human beings love. Well, thank you, Jennifer, for being a guest on Now This Interview. Thank you. It was fun. 
for more information on Jennifer Fox, visit zoefilms.com and myspace.com slash flyingconfessionsfilm. This has been an exclusive presentation of myspace.com slash now this interview in affiliation with Jewish Living of the South, Incorporated, and Jewish Scene.